got Luandu joining us online. Let's just get that screen everything sorted out for you guys who are visiting us playing a away game today. Radio. I was a bit worried. I mean, I, I briefly looked between the screens and I saw somebody downing and I thought, oh my goodness, why are you drinking, why are you drinking olive oil or <laughs> because of the color of the, and I was like, okay, right, no, 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 I'm fine. It's been a long day, it's been a long week, but um, I'm pretty sure you don't need to lubricate yourself in that way. <laughs> yeah, people did strange things during uh, lockdown, huh? I was drinking hand sanitizer because it's got high alcohol content and stuff wow. like that. And mixing it, ah, really seriously. Tight. <laughs> Make yourself a cup of a rib or yeah, something. But... <laughs> but don't do it, whatever. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> That they have to binge every weekend. Oh, I suppose I suppose the same goes for people who are binging um, the series that they're addicted to, uh, shows or whatever. But no, um, during a hard lockdown when nobody had nothing, uh, <laughs> there wasn't any, so we're fine. Yeah. I didn't go out of my way and find stuff or whatever. I mean, but I think, yeah, some people really, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've never been in a position like that to, to experience what, um, yeah, what, People like that experience, but and now that you have actually, as a matter of fact, now that you have free access to it, I think it, we we all drink actually drink less. Yes. So on the radio this morning, in let me see, the Landon is also joining us on radio. In this morning, they they have this on KFM, the small business. They run ads for them on their behalf. In return, they they did the night prices or whatever that people can run on a daily basis. And one of the products that apparently has become an I don't know, the first time I heard about it this morning. Apparently it's called rescue. I mean, there's all kinds of um um anti-hangover products that have been around for long, but apparently a lot of people use this and it works. But I mean, what's the point of actually um socializing to a point where you have to take something to do better the next morning why don't you rather than even do nothing or stop earlier i mean but apparently if you yeah you, supposedly you have to you have to take um a dosage in the evening you may apparently provide it you can pay i mean you know already diluted whatever's in it probably just a lot of vitamins and especially oh, vitamin d no it's not a substitute it's it's to it's to prevent you from feeling Horrible the next morning. I don't even see the man of sand, the man of sand yeah. Everybody has, and you know what? The, 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 the thing about this is um, welcome, Landon, Landu. Um, the thing about this is it's whatever works for you. If you believe it's going to work for you, it's going to work for you. And we make ourselves believe sometimes it works. But, yeah, I feel much better. I mean, what are you going to say? I try to feel much worse. And nobody wants that reaction. Should psychologically you've already uh, convinced yourself that it's been, that it actually works. Oh <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's not a full house today. We can't even no, you can't even play a proper hand of blackjack. Not enough of you guys online and in class, but so. Uh, we can have fun. Um, I can see that um, you trouble to actually stay awake so far today, but it's the fact that the weekend is around the corner, although you're going to spend half your weekend, if not uh, probably uh, doing assignments. Uh, previous class, I have five assignments to do next week. Two on Monday, and it was like, oh my goodness. But then, um, Josh, where are you are? Have you brought us something from a preacher at home? 
<laughs> Not today. <laughs> Oh guys, oh, I don't know when the weather changes again all of a sudden. Ay, ay, ay. I can do with this. I can deal with this weather. It's like this tomorrow morning when you can actually oh, I can't sleep in tomorrow morning. You just have to go to school. Um but um yeah, it, it's actually it's quite nice to have a after the last two rather humid and hot days that we've had, giving us a sort of a um, a glimpse on what lies ahead in um, in February and how we have to find alternative masks because I think I'm going to definitely die if I have to wear this mask in February. Um, with the heat, you can, I can immediately feel it, yes. But anyway, um, what we did um, in, in this chapter so far um, about which, go, uh, which, which is about businesses uh, doing business with each other, in other words, selling in the business market um we've established that it is a much lengthier much more complex um, process because of the amount of money that's spent per transaction as well as the number of people um, who are involved and where you can probably go to 5 10 15 20 different shops to buy shoes and and, and, and t-shirts stuff like that in a business market there are fewer suppliers um and therefore um there are fewer supplies and therefore there's it's always a negotiation involved almost with um before you purchase and it's not just one team and i think we finished off last uh, last session where i said it's not it's not your um your old um format of or traditional format of salesperson or also with the consumer market salesperson directly um contact with the, the seller and the buyer directly in contact with each other. There's no other people involved. Even if you're buying at the shop, the marketing has been done already. The selling has been done already. Nobody's selling you stuff in pick and pay. You are buying, but you were sold already to buy there. Okay, so that part of the transaction is concluded, the retail transaction is concluded there. Um, but when these businesses doing business with each other, initially there might be a salesperson contacting from the buyer and from the seller contacting each other because the buyers have the sales department and they have a purchasing department, they have an HR department and sales for the seller. So initially people from the sales department are in contact with each other and then eventually the departments contact each other directly. And that's just how um, selling in a business environment in a business market um, works. The important thing however is revisiting the marketing concept. That hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. We are still, and the intention is still um, in the interaction between buyer and seller to satisfy the needs of the buyer. We want the customer to be satisfied. We want him or we want that company to be happy with the product or services that we offer because um, they'll buy a lot from us again because of the size of the transaction um, in a business market. Um, therefore, your sales force which includes different representatives from different departments not just from the sales department um, in a business transaction um, is the direct link between um, the buyer and the seller um, in most of the cases guys online sound good can you hear me nothing is muted you still there didn't just switch on and then disappear uh -huh. I hear nothing, that means nothing. Okay. So yes, it's, um, so it's, in, it's, it's not just important that there's a proper communication done. It's also important that um, they identify, specifically identify um, the needs and if there are changes in need. Um, in business, when, when, when you the buyers and sellers do business, um, in, in, in a business market, it's, it's not, um, because of the quantity spent, um, and the length of the whole process to reach the point of sale, um, you almost, it's almost a friendship, not just a relationship that that's, that's established between a buyer and a seller. So, and hopefully the relationship in the negotiation process have been of such a nature that when eventually you buy, 
you use a product and you find, oh, geez, we need to, uh, this product's not going to work for us anymore. That you have the, um, um, that you have, that, 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 that you have an open channel to, uh, um, to approach your supplier and say, listen, these, these things change. Um, or the specs have changed and the requirements in our industry for what we do and what we are going to, especially when raw products are sold between businesses um, and they're going to use it to manufacture something else. We can't use it in this manner. Is it possible? Can, can you guys do this for us? So they try and keep with the same supplier because of the effort that has already gone into the, um, in the relationship. Uh, and that would be their first stop, not to shop around at somebody who could give the new product to them or the, uh, that fits the new requirements, but rather go to the ones who are supplying them and try and um, um, establish or try and um, convince them if they um, uh, to, 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 to keep their business by changing the product according to their specs. And that's very often where, um, where the products and we have said it previously in the chapter as well, where uh, a customized um, a product is, is very often part of a transaction between businesses because of that nature. And then the, the, the supplier, or if, if they were the seller, um, initially must also um, come to the party. And they probably will because they realize if those guys can't be satisfied, they're going to go elsewhere. Um, they are, are thankful and that the transaction is not going elsewhere and that they at least had the decency of contacting them first and say, can't you guys change because we want to stay with you. But that's not going to happen if you've had a bad experience or if the relationship uh, ended up in, right, well, we have to do the deal because we need this, but we're definitely not going to go back there. But that can happen. Um, it's not everything is, is, is uh, not everything is, uh, run smoothly and every transaction ends in a very good relationship, but uh, that's the intention. And obviously, I'm not going to try and sell the worst case scenario to you, I'm going to try and sell the best case scenario to you. So that's what all salespeople are uh, attempting to achieve. So we can satisfy the customer. And obviously that will be the case um, if you follow the, if you follow the guidelines that's provided in this chapter for you. Now, in summary, you can probably then say that the four roles that is played um, by uh, salespeople in a business market is that of you're a crusader for the for the organization. You are a, um, a brand ambassador. You're not just a salesperson. You believe in the product, and that's why you're selling it. Or you believe in the service that you are trying to sell um, to such an extent where. If there is from the buyer side some criticism that you think is unfound or um, 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 unconfirmed or unconfirmed rumors very often, um, you defend. You're on your haunches because this is your company. Um, and despite the fact that in, in, the, in the era that we, we find ourselves in currently, you as millennials, um, the reputation is already there that millennials are not as loyal to the um, to, 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 to their jobs. I mean, they do it, work for a company a couple of years and then they move on. Um, there's a number of reasons for that. Um, it's not just a specific characteristic of, of an, um, your um, generation. Uh, lo and behold, it will be the next generation, the guys, the people born after 2012, um, up to 2025, um, they are called Generation Alpha. Um, those would be kids going to school. Yeah, they're probably grade one, grade two at the moment. Hmm? Yes. Millennials were just before you. Yeah. But you find that the reason why these kind of challenges are present in businesses and when they say high staff turnover, usually high staff in the, in the traditionally would have been a red flag. So, oh, what's wrong with that business? Because, I mean, staff keep on going. And um, the the changes is, is, is not related to the characteristics of your particular generation. It is because of the, of, of the time we find ourselves in, um, as a result of us, um, of us being in the middle of the um, industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution, uh, where technology um, sort of tells us where we have to go um, in, in a business, you stay with the business and you move on as things progress. But then businesses also grow and expand 
and you might stay with the same business or go to an affiliate um, um, company of the mother business, so to speak. And, and, and therefore, it's often seen as you guys are restless and I mean, yeah, you'll never be loyal, but then you find that they stay within the same industry um, or within the affiliated um, the members of, of that particular organization. But then also the fact that um, the baby boomers and generation, what is that, X after them, they uh, find themselves age 45 plus and already through years of working experience, not just necessarily at one company. So that's also the misconception that we see that somebody at the age of 45, oh, he's been with the company for 20 years. No, he hasn't been with the company. He doesn't need to be for the company for 30 years. He needs to be in a position similar to that. Over time, at different companies, he could end up there. But they are finding it very challenging because they find now on their workforce people from three different generations. There's people older than them who are still very loyal and been there for 30 years. They just have no further aspirations to, um, for advancement. Then you've got your Generation Z and you've got your um, Millennials. Everybody in the same building working for the same company. All have different challenges, all have different characteristics. And, and, and that makes it difficult um, and impact on, on the fact that there's such a um, um, volatile movement of, of staff. I'm pretty sure that's probably not going to happen for the next number of years. Um, people are going to be loyal, but they're going to be loyal because they want to just keep a job. Um, not necessarily because they are happy or very motivated to, to be at a particular company. But that's the challenges that, that COVID will pose uh, or is already uh, is surfacing. But um, yeah, you don't find too often or you do very um, often still find in, 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 in some businesses that there are those loyal um, employees who've been with the company who's, who's been a crusader for the company for many, many years. Um, market researchers, yes, because you'll be part of a team, especially because you're doing business in the business market. You have to do a lot of research um, um, on your on your bias, on your potential bias. It's not very difficult because there are not that many, but um, for that same reason, you have to be very, 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 um, you have to be very um, specific um, and 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 do a lot of research. Um, and that's why I still can't understand in our times that we live in now and it's in the news about corruption and tenders and whatever and tender corruption and tenderpreneurs as they call themselves, um, the people who benefit from it, that if a company with a name that doesn't even relate to the particular industry that they are putting a tender in um, and, and they, they have a very strange name and it's XYZ153, I don't think that could be anything. Uh, why people still sign off big checks um, to companies like that and think nothing of it. Um, yes, fortunately, there is some action now on, on the front of, of our leaders taking charge and saying, no, 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 that can't happen. Um, shouldn't happen. You have to be a great negotiator. That we know. Negotiator, but and we'll have a look at when we look um, further into the chapter about the different selling and um, selling roles that um, negotiation um, or negotiators also take on different forms. Um, it's not just always try and get the best deal for your business. Um, that's not what negotiation means. It still comes back to mutual, mutually satisfactory arrangement finally. If you walk away from a deal and you feel, ah, gee, wow, we won this one, uh-uh. It, that's not going to result in a long-standing relationship. If both parties walk away and they are happy, equally happy, um, then you've achieved something. And that is um, the case also when businesses sell to consumers. A consultant? Oh, yes, definitely. And, and more so than, than, than um, with consumers doing business with, um, with, with sellers, um, your a business market or you're selling in the sellers in the business market um, are very well linked in their network of um, or their support structure or the, the, the network in which they operate to ensure that um, that they know who to go to 
because they are going to at one point or some point or maybe at a few occasions in the whole process um, are going to rely on the systems um, the knowledge of, of other people okay you will be expected and often will have to um, you often have to um, just provide advice and not necessarily make a um, authoritative decision. Right, three types of businesses. I think we know this. We, we've got the reseller. Business buy from a business, usually raw material, um, a, 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 a completed product already because they are just acting as a wholesaler, selling it to somebody else, down to the retailer. Um, nothing necessarily was, the product itself didn't change. It might even be that the packaging hasn't even changed. It was just that the particular manufacturer, the seller, didn't have the means of getting the product to the buyer. And as a result of that, they used other um, um, intermediaries that's available in the um, distribution channel. And they um, uh, will ensure that the product gets to, to the end user. That's where... Um, um, businesses doing business with each other refer to specifically those type of businesses like a take a They shop and collect on behalf of different companies, store it. So when you go online, it's when you go online on take a lot and you order this, it pay. Oh, sorry, not enough money. Uh, right, let me use a different card. Eventually, you get a transaction done. And they don't then receive it as well. Oh, geez, and Linden wants, oh, shucks, we don't have that. On the line, phone the company that has it. No, they have already got that in stock. So that's part of what they do because that's the service that they that they provide. Businesses um, or business producers, that's where the raw materials are bought. Um, this particular item can be used in anything but a specific purpose. If it is, however, used in um, conjunction with other ingredients, we can actually come out with the end result of a nice cheesecake or something. Okay, so there's raw materials that's used, and that is another form of business that's doing business with each other. Um, you're not a business if you're buying um, ingredients at pick and pay to go back a cake at home. Okay, we're talking about businesses doing um, things to remain in business. Your main function is to consume that product that you need, where the business's uh, uh, function is to supply a product that they have made from different ingredients, different raw materials. And business users. Businesses buy from other businesses, stuff that they need to, like the desk and chairs and the stationery that they need to have to operate on a daily basis and fulfill their specific business function. Okay, we're all clear on this. It's... Right. Oh, hello. Different types of individuals that you will find. We, we can just go through a couple, just, in, uh, just for interest sake. You're not going to get a question that says, listen, um, guys, we've got 10 different types of individuals that buyers can be um, can, can be confronted with. I want you to explain and give me an example of each for 20 more. Okay, that would be a nice and easy question because uh, especially now when it's, when it's assessed in the manner in which it's done now. But it's besides the point. It's besides the point. Just know that there are different ones. Um, and the interesting ones for me is you will always get that collaborator who the buyer wants to be part of the whole process. He likes negotiating. He contributes a lot in the negotiation. Uh, he wants a deal done and everything, but no, he actually has no other value um, and contribution. It's just you, you have those type of individuals who just uh, we don't want to feel left out. <laughs> Then you have your hard bargainers. He plays different suppliers against each other, um, and he wants the best deal possible, um, and usually gets it too. Uh, straight shooter. Don't do a long, impressive sales presentation and pitch to this guy. No, he's going to ask you hard questions to the point. Can you deliver this when? In three months time or in two weeks time, I want five in blue, do you deliver in blue? So it's questions that to the point and usually have a sort of yes or no answer um, as a, as a, or a result of options as, a, as an answer. Um, and 
You know exactly. They, they've got a lot of integrity and you know where you stand with them. This is the type of person that you want to do or the type of person that you want to do business with. Socializers, those guys, oh, yeah, it's okay, but let's, let's talk about this over a beer or two or uh, maybe lunch. I mean, you, you have those guys who feel that's the only way of doing business uh, or the preferred way of doing business. Um, service orientated, so right at the bottom. Um, this type of buyer you'll find um, doesn't really matter. The product itself is fine. He's assuming that everything is fine. More interested in the warranties, the extra services, the offer sale service that comes with the uh, with the package than the actual product itself. In other words, he's not going to buy something he's not happy with. But is um, not as concerned uh, about a specific product, but he will very easily go to another supplier who offers the same product or even an inferior product, but is offering a better, um, a better support service system or guarantees or warranties. The technology, oh, geez, you get them too, yes. Hmm. Couldn't be bothered with anything else but the specs. That's the specs that drives everything. Top of their game, they know the ins and outs. They can even tell you where that particular, um, what plantation that particular um, um, tree that was used for. Came. No, it's, you get those people. And unfortunately, um, or fortunately, when he's business, doing business with businesses, um, you can refer that to another department. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll get, I'll check it to check the interview because they, they just talk a different language. They do talk a different language. However, if I'm an individual, if I'm buying from from from, from like going into shop, I hate it when those sales people become so technical and stuff like that. Really, um, I know what I want. All I want to know is can this thing do it? Don't tell me about and this and the revs and that and the. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't care. Yeah, but this particular um, motherboard has got uh, it's got three um, fans. I couldn't give a hell. Is it going to lag? <laughs> is it going to give you problems? No. The fact is, you um, you have those types of buyers who to whom the specifications is the ultimate. And fortunately, we're all different, thankfully. Right, different buying roles that you can put yourself in. Remember, we did this in marketing. You could be the buyer, you could be the selector, you could be the initiator, you could be the um, purchaser, dad going through the drive, with, family going through the drive through with wherever. Everybody has different orders. So everybody are different selectors on, as to what they want from the menu. There's one person who is the, um, who is the, um, payer, that's usually the person driving the car and with the wallet. Uh, and then you've got the users, which is basically in the case like this, everybody who has, will be eating what they have ordered. Okay, so that's the different roles in a specific scenario where, or in a, in, in a consumer um, buying situation. There's a few more people who are added to that process or a few more roles that can be played when we do um, business in a business market. And usually the person who has the problem, who's experiencing the problem is the initiator. Lady working on switchboard for the call center and the headset that she has is just not doing all the support. Halfway through most conversations, which doesn't last more than three minutes, the arm drops, I mean, and uh, um, the audio is not that good anymore. She tells her boss about it, or she tells her supervisor about it. So she's the initiator. She would also eventually be the user because she's going to get the new headset that they're going to order. Then um, the influencers are the people who, um, like for instance, the um, in this regard, it could be her um, if it's referred to, let's say, the IT department because they work with the installation of the system, or they work with the operating of the system. In a particular, and in the call center like that. Um, it could be the, let's say the head of IT would say, mm, you know what? Yeah, um, I've, I've done some research myself. I know of, this is definitely not the top of the range, but I think this and this and this, and he makes recommendations. So he influences the decision 
the deciders are usually in in a business transaction are more than one person and more, it's usually a, a number of people who have who represent different departments um and in the case where um something uh, it could be a committee and they decide from all the alternatives that the influencer has provided them um, which one actually is the best they will make recommendations and at any point your gatekeepers could be the director or the head of finance where we're walking and said, listen, oh, 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 hang on, hang on, I'm sure you guys are going to I like your enthusiasm, but we have to look at this and this and this. So the gatekeeper is always somebody that sort of just does that final check overseeing that everything is fine and he was, he's happy with it because you don't want to go um, far into a transaction, a business transaction, and then um, get to a point where there's a firewall because you haven't done your um, your research properly and the negotiations fall flat. The purchaser or the buyer is actually the person who finally makes the decision that yes, this is what we're going to buy uh, and places the order. And then in the big business, it's not the same person who actually then eventually pushes the buttons and make that electronic transfer or because we don't use checks anymore. Okay. Are there anybody who's still using checks? The other day they wanted me to uh, to, uh, I, was, I, I applied for something and they say, so I, I just needed a blank uh, um, across a check. In other words, a check that lines through it, no value, there's no amount in it because we want. Can you send, can you send me a photograph? Because I don't know. I, that was the first thing, um, the first thing when I um, started working, I mean, you rushed to the bank. Yeah. You, you, you you step into big shoes now if you have a checkbook. Woo! People are carrying their checkbook and they're showing it to you. Oh, you've got a 50 page checkbook. Wow, you must have a very um, good bank balance. Because that that nowadays really people. Um, can I tap this card? <laughs> this is what happens. Um, so yeah, it's in times of change, thankfully. But in a business scenario, there's always somebody who pays, and it's usually um somebody in the finance department not the head of finance not the financial director financial director could be the financial director could be anybody it could be a gatekeeper or usually a gatekeeper it could be one of the deciders in the committee but um it would be some financial assistant somewhere in the finance office a debtors clock or a creditors clock will just be you're responsible for making the payment and that's what that person does Usually the same person who pushes the buttons for the salaries within a month as well. Okay, we've got about eight minutes to go before the session expires. Um, and then we take a quick break and then let these guys uh, reconnect. Um, different selling roles that we find ourselves in. Hmm. Your order takers. Order takers, this is this is a quite popular, um quite popular question often, popular question often to um just Distinguish between the different um, selling roles, or they'll give you two or three, and uh, you've got to indicate them which which is which. But especially because we are into sales and operations or personal selling, this particular um, um, subject or module, um, the selling role would also be. Or this, although we are dealing with sellers and buyers in this chapter, the, seller, the seller's role will always be the more important one to also prepare for. Assessment. Um, selling roles, there are four of them, the order takers. The order takers are the people who, um, for instance, they, if I can, if I can give you a, an example that probably much more can relate to, that's the waitress in the restaurant. Okay, she takes the order. Nothing else. The responsibility stop there as well. Okay, and that's the, the particular role that that person plays. Quite low level, focus on um, on little more than just taking the actual order of the goods. Okay, and you have somebody in the purchase department of a company who deals with that. That's all they do. Um, the persuaders and the sustainers slightly more involved in the role in, in, in trying to keep the, the buyer informed as to um, where we are in the process and what um, possible um possible options prices and products are available to them and then you have your motivated and problem solvers um which um are usually people if we look at the previous roles that can be fulfilled 
um, you'll find are your are your decision makers um, because they are the ones that would have all the information available and the options uh, and the alternatives and therefore would be in the best position to actually uh, recognize how the problem can be solved. Okay. Um, the value creator, basically anybody in, in the entire process that adds value to the transaction. Um, could be offer sell service, it could be the lady who um, the, the, the order was phoned into, who is a very friendly person, and all of a sudden the buyer says, Well, I think we made the right decision with this one. And he hasn't even received the product yet. Uh, but just the manner in which um, that person conducts himself. Um, classic scenario I watched a short little video clip the other day for another module I'm teaching on. on, on, on um, a good and a bad experience about this lady came in she bought a product um the product was not functioning properly so she went onto their website like most people do first nowadays she didn't pick up the phone okay and, well she didn't buy a toaster from pick and pay which you will probably just chuck in the back of the car and drive back to the store but um uh, she bought um, a range of books online um and um you can see it was still in the bubble wrap she received it and, but they were after order was incorrect so she went back onto the site and said listen sorry boom, boom. your return policy da, 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 and this is right consultant will be contacting me very shortly almost those things remember we said um salesforce automation that's a, that's a, a system that's in place you you don't speak to anybody you speak to a computer and the computer refers you to somebody you will eventually speak to somebody the problem really is the person that you speak to is usually the person that you shouldn't be speaking to. In this case, she then actually said, no consultant came back to me in two days, so she actually went to the shop. The lady sitting there at the shop said, oh, sorry, I mean, this is not sex, I mean, it, was, it, was a, it was a lady, it could be a man as well. In this case, it was a female. So she said, um, I'm here, this is what happened. And then, oh, yes, but our policy is that you have to um, go onto the website and contact the consultant. Yes, I did, and nobody did, that's why I'm here. But I can't help you. All our consultants work online. Nobody is yeah. Wrong way of dealing with it. Wrong way of not just is she annoyed now because the problem hasn't been solved, the manner in which this person completely uh, ignores the issue, and which is not necessarily forget the refund or I'm yeah, help me. Because nobody else wants to, and it's your company's stuff. Then they revert the roles and it's a different way of doing it is to actually say, yes, ma'am, can I help you? Oh, yes. Right. Is this the problem? Oh, unfortunately, all our consultants work for on, online, um, but I'm pretty sure you are aware of that. But um, And therefore, nobody's here. But let me take this for you and see. Oh, right. You ordered it. You'll see you got that two days ago. That's fine. Um, but write the details down and I will give it to the consultant who deals with it. Problem hasn't been solved because she hasn't been refunded and she hasn't got a new set of books. But she feels happy because she was actually, it was resolved in a good way, in a good manner. Somebody just put their hands up and said, I'll help you. Not my problem. I can't solve your problem, but I will help solving your problem. That's all what the customers want. And then, on the other hand, yesterday, uh, for two and a half minutes to go before the session finishes, and we take a short one minute break, two minute break, whatever. Um, I went to pick and pay. I'm one of those, I shop at the closest shop. I'm not brand loyal, it doesn't have to be checkers or far or whatever. I go to the closest one. I buy my stuff, um, pack in, and the lady says, uh, This is it. I said, But because I usually, when I buy my groceries, I buy it with my pay consumers. Well, because I separate certain transactions from certain cards. And I know that at the end of the month I pay and then whatever, it's open for a month. And I don't have to carry cash with me. I've got this card. This is, but I've, I've just rung it up as a cash sale. I, I don't care. Oh, I don't have cash with me. So, I mean, <laughs> either keep your stuff here and I go to another shop or we make a plan. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll call the supervisor. I'm pretty sure you can use one of these mobile machines. The supervisor comes. No, you can't use this mobile machine. All right, I'm already annoyed because say, she should know that it doesn't work um, on that on that mobile device. The supervisor had to do the following. Every single item that was purchased 
can be done by the cashier. The supervisor had to create it. Print, I have to sign it because now they've got this that was bought uh, but not paid for, and this was now credited. So that goes into the file. She had to now scan everything again after she's unpacked my bags and then put it back. And you got to that point where she was like, you can see Brian standing and pushing it back in the bags and was not happy. It was, I didn't make a mistake. So I got really annoyed. I said to her, listen, it's fine. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry for all the trouble, sir. I said, no, 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 it's fine. I'm, I'm okay. I wasn't because I was already planned on some, doing something else, but now they've hijacked my time. But it's fine. I said, but just a minute. Next time. Don't let the customer feel that they made the mistake. Own up to your mistake. And what, in your opinion, could you have done differently next time? If you asked for my smart shopper card, which I gave you, which is not to pay, which is to actually just capture my reward points. And I have the other card in my hand. What do you think what I'm going to do? Pay cash? And what happened about asking? Are you going to pay, sir? Because that's quite simple. You save yourself a lot of trouble. So I thought, while I'm there, my time has been hijacked. Let's do a bit of education as well. So sometimes also when that situation happens, um, people don't just walk away and make a scene of, right, I'm never coming back. No, you want to go back because it's a closed shop. So who's being inconvenient?